Um, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to configure Azure AD um, to federate to Zscaler Internet Access and Zscaler Private Access, um, specifically how to send um, uh, an assertion that includes the, the group attribute um, and, and, and send across all the groups that a user is a member of. So um, to start off with, um, I'm going to show you um, the authentication settings for Zscaler Internet Access. So um, authentication is said to, to SAML, hosted providers. Um, here's my logon URL, which is uh, Azure AD. And we're expecting display name, member of, and department. Um, the same is also true for private access um, insofar as uh, here is my URL, exactly the same URL, um, signed response um, and um, source setup. And, and obviously ZPA will take any number of attributes. Um, again, we're expecting an attribute called member of, um, an attribute called user principal name and some other attributes that are just sent by default. Um, we don't particularly care about those. Um, on uh, Zscaler Internet Access, I've already got my user federated, so I actually want to just go ahead and, and delete that um, just so you can see this from first principles if we activate that. Um, so there's no user in there. Um, so let's go and have a look at um, how it looks from Azure AD. So I've got my enterprise applications, got quite a few of them in there. Don't need to care about most of them. Internet access for my um, instance. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing this on the beta cloud. So you'll notice this is Zscaler beta. This is ZPA beta. Um, so it's just worth uh, knowing that I'm different clouds, different um, configurations. So in terms of single sign-on, um, it's already set up uh, to, to send it to um, log into Zscaler beta SFC SSO. As we said, certificates have been exchanged. Um, let's go ahead and look in here what we've got. So we've got the, the name ID. Name ID is quite simply my user principal name. Um, there's a config in here for guest users, which actually does some transformation of user principal name, but we don't need to concern ourselves on that one here. Um, there is then an attribute, um, which is uh, display name. Display name is joining my first name and my surname, Mark space Ryan. Um, and here is the member of. Um, and so member of, um, uh, I've changed, obviously here, I've changed the name of the attribute because we don't want to send uh, a long UPN, um, not UPN, uh, you, um, uh, claim identifier name. Uh, we're going to send all of the groups that the user is a member of. And in prior versions of Azure AD, up to about sometime middle to late last year, um, they, Microsoft had a limit of eight groups that could be sent in the assertion. Um, they removed that and now there's uh, there's a much higher limit. I would still absolutely um, suggest that you filter the groups. You know, you don't send all of your groups to any service provider, just send the groups that are important for that service provider to, set, to apply policy on. So uh, create groups that are called internet general, internet restricted, and send those don't send us the fact that the user is a domain admin. So you can create another claim over here and filter that if you want. Um, so all groups, um, and we're going to send it as an attribute called member of, and then this piece here is very important. So group ID is the GUID um, that Azure AD holds. Um, so a long um, uh, numerical kind of uh, string. Uh, on premise, GUID is the or group identifier is the, the, the group GUID that actually exists in your on-premise AD if you've got one. So again, numerical, you can still apply policy on it. It kind of obfuscates the actual group name, but it becomes slightly tricky to, to, to read. SAM account name, it's a bit of a misnomer. It, 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 it's the um, simple name for the, um, for the group. So it is you know, domain space users. Um, my domain is called Welsh Geek. Or welshgeek.net so netbios domain slash uh, sam account domain would be welshgeek slash domain users and dns domain slash sam account name is welshgeek.net slash domain users so we want to use the the sam account name format 
You're obviously going to have a specific version of it as your AD, uh, AD Connect to be able to synchronize them if you've got an on-premise AD synchronizing with Azure AD. And, and really, that's about it. Um, so let's just take a look whilst we're at it at the, the private access um, beta um, configuration. Again, single sign-on. Um, here are the URLs. Um, it's sending through a, a number of other uh, attributes. Um, some of these have got a, a fully qualified claim name, uh, mail, given name, use principal name, surname, uh, and groups um, is exactly the same configuration. So it's all set up and working. Um, let's, uh, let's work out how we actually go ahead and test all of this. So I'm going to come across here and I'm going to clear all of my, um, my cookies because I want to start from first principles. I've got a SAML tracer over here. I'm keeping Firefox for my testing and uh, um, uh, Chrome for all of my configuration just to keep the two separate. And then we'll, we'll, we'll jump into Zscaler app in a second. So if I just press enter on cat.com, it's going to take me through the authentication process, take me to Azure, uh, Azure AD, log me in and then I get the website. If we take a look at the SAML tracer here, we can see that it's it's come from Microsoft. There's the, um, the, the, the IDP identifier. I've got all the certificates in here. Here's my uh, user principal name come through as a name ID. Um, uh, a bunch of other attributes, which we're actually gonna ignore because we don't, we are, uh, uh, it's come from ZPA, uh, Zscaler uh, beta, um, and we're not expecting these claims. So Zscaler Internet Access will just ignore those. And then here is here is the member of, and it's sending through all of those groups that I am a member of, uh, as well as my display name. All well and good. Um, and it's applying policy on that. And if we come back over here and we refresh this portal, Let's take a little, uh, little bit of time. It's the beta cloud and uh, everybody seems to be working from home for some reason. Um, and, and you can see all of those groups have been created here, which we can then apply policy on. Fantastic. So how does it look for private access? Well, I can um, come in here and I can take this URL here, the first principles, um, and I can paste that in here as well. And so if we go through that, It'll go through the, the logon page um, and we can have a look in the SAML tracer. Here we see the same um, ticketing server. Um, we know that the desk, it came from um, SAML SP or was going to SAML SP ZPA beta or SSO. Um, sorry about the, the flicking back and forth. Here is my user principal name. Here is the uh, audience, the consumer. Um, and we get all of this other information. We can see my display name, um, how I authenticated, and everything like that. And here are the groups, Internet 4, Internet blah, 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 Internet 2. So policy is being applied, um, or sorry, um, the attributes have been consumed. We can start applying policy on these now. So um, let's uh, let's get rid of this um, and actually sign in to... Um, Zscaler app. Uh, so I'm going to log in as mryan at welshgeek.net. It's going to ask me which cloud I want. Obviously, you can automate all of this as you deploy it, but we'll just take you through it. Zscaler beta, sign in to Zscaler internet access and Zscaler private access, registers the device, generates all the security tokens, um, and then we are enrolled. So let's go ahead and open this up. mryan at welshgeek.net. Um, internet security and everything's working. So um, if we go ahead now and go to cat.com, going through, uh, we can go to ip.zscaler.com. In fact, um, that's all working and, and it should have uh, uh, no proxy if we take that out. And refresh this now. Uh, we're going through the beta node because Zscaler app is taking that traffic. So if we come into internet access, 
web insights we look at the logs for the last two minutes um, click apply hmm. I don't know what that is um, and let's just take a look for user and Ryan Um, and here is the cat.com um, traffic. And if we scroll across here, more specifically, um, select all. We can see that Zscaler app was what forwarded that traffic. So Zscaler app is picking it up, forwarding the traffic, and we know we can apply policy on that based on those groups. Um, so let's come into Zscaler private access and, uh, and take a look at some things. So I've got an application segment called um, CentOS. It's a server running in my, my data center on port 22. Um, and if we look at the uh, access policy, um, access policy here says deny CentOS um, to any user that's a member of group Internet 2. It's not particularly the best test, but it's a it's a test nonetheless. And so if I SSH to CentOS, I'm going to get um, access denied. And the reason why access is denied, um, if we come into the diagnostics, Um, let's just give it a second. Oh, it's actually uh, triggering on a time. Oh, hang on. This is this is 20 minutes ago. So let's just give it a second for this to refresh. There we go. Um, it's triggering on this deny sent offs rule, um, which is the one we, we just saw. Internet 2. Now we know um, that I'm a member of Internet 2. We already saw those groups coming through. So clearly the policy is um, is applying. If we change this to Internet 20 and click Save, um, and because uh, I know I'm not in group Internet 20, um, an SSH, again, policy is effective immediately, uh, and, and I'm on the cloud. And if we net stats minus AN uh, grep, 22 we can see that the connection um, to this server which is dot 11 has come from dot 145 which is my connector if that uh, um, really made uh, a great deal of difference um, to, to what you're seeing here we can see um, my connector 145 um, is actually up and running. So there we have it. Um, Zscaler internet access and private access, group based um, uh, attributes being sent in the SAML assertion, applying policy on them, logging the traffic, and making policy changes. I hope that's useful.